what's going on guys for those of you that are hanging out waiting i appreciate all of you that are here so far um i've got a few of these that piled up so it was like you know what i want to do a live unboxing let's talk about it with a live audience one in particular he's always in my live streams so i felt like it was only right to do this in front of him um and for those of you watching the replay i greatly appreciate you again there's i put it in the chat but i'll also let you know there's links to all four of these websites for all four of these indie brands that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, some of them I have experience. Two I have experience with the brands. Two are brand new to me. So I appreciate everybody being in here. Got a bunch of you showing up already. We'll hang tight for just a moment before we start getting into scent of the day because I'm wearing quite a lovely and special fragrance today. What's going on, Jared? Supply and demand, not so famous YouTuber, Ethan, Bobby Jones. Nick, uh, Kyler, I see all of you guys. I appreciate you. We already got to 40 in the first minute, so you guys know that's the trigger for when we talk about scent of the day. For me, Sphinx Fragrances, Black Anubis, Anubis, however you want to say it, because I get corrected all the time. I don't know for certain what is the correct way to say it, but I do know that this stuff is fan-freaking-tastic. Very fresh, wearable, dry oud wood fragrance. A lot of pencil shaving, dry woods, Light spice, bright, juicy grapefruit that hangs out for a long time. It's aromatic. This is a feel-good fragrance right here. Muhammad killed this one. It's so, so good. I have five sprays around my neck. I left my forearms and everything free because we're going to spray on skin with these four fragrances we're going to be talking about. But, man, I love this stuff. This is so good. Rocking Blue de Chanel Parfum today. I don't know. What's up? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. How are you? What's going on? Versace Dylan Blue. Rocking under the lemon tree. I smelled that one time. They had it at a TJ Maxx, believe it or not, and it was out in the open. It was a tester. Drop a like on your way in. Excited for this live. I appreciate you, as am I. 20 likes, 45 people. We can do better than that. Definitely hit that thumbs up for me, guys. Picked up Aqua Senziali Blue today. Love it. That's what I'm talking about. And once again, for those of you just jumping in, Sphinx Fragrances, Black Anubis, 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 however you say it. It's amazing. And it's my scent of the freaking day. Ow, that was my elbow. Let's see. Getting behind Joel. What's going on? Paris Corner. That man likes his Middle Eastern fragrance. A smooth operator. What's going on? Good to see you. Royal Tobacco. And then Imaginary Authors, The Cobra and The Canary. That's what's going on. Um, I'm actually going to be getting, speaking of Amouage, I have Overture Man coming. A tester of Overture Man. That, I told you guys, that's the first one I'm getting this year. And I will be doing a collaboration with Twisted Lily. I do do those from time to time. They're going to be sending me Amwaj Lineage from the new collection. I'm only getting one, and I'm going to get samples of the others. So I'll have a bottle of Lineage and at least samples. I don't know if it'd be travel atomizers or not, but samples of the other three in the collection. I'm extremely excited about that, speaking of Amwaj. I'll go send you blue. First instinct, blue at the gym. My man, that's my favorite blue fragrance. That's what's going on. Rare Carbon, big fan of that one. Scott, I'm doing well. Sent you an email a couple days ago. I'm sure you get tons. Yes, I do. Look forward to the first impressions on the stream. Uh, Scott, your package went out today. All the packages went out today. Um, the people that won the poster and Zed sample sets, those are coming directly from Zaharoff. But um, the Aqua de Joe bottle, that came from me. Uh, got my dossier and um niche for all giveaways out today as well so i was at the post office for a little while earlier today testing a sample of one million lucky that's good stuff bria how are you tempo from city rhythm that's some good stuff so we're gonna go ahead and get into this just a little bit i'd love to see hez jump in here from hez parfums because that's what we're gonna start with i'd love for him to be here paul how are you tuscan leather Ooh, thinking about buying dolce diablo I ended up that I was supposed to wear that yesterday. I ended up going with Blue de Chanel Parfum, so it's moving to next week. But it's been it's on my rotation table. I'm gonna wear it within the next few days. It's, it's such a good gourmand. Notorious, but take a shower, test new fragrance. Uh, testing Cognac Cafe first. Mas Milano Tango Casino Elixir Azaro Wanted Latafa Amir Al Oud. Ross, we got your areas Arctic weather this weekend. I heard Dallas got some serious ice and snow. I'm assuming you're in the Texas area because they, they got some really cold weather recently. It's, it was 65 degrees over here today. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so we've got quite the uh, – not really. I'm going to try it first. I'm going to get a decant, and I'm sure it's going to be good, but if it's too redundant, I won't buy a bottle. That's why I want to try it first. 
when we give away with triple X. Yeah. So yours is coming from, uh, from Zaharoff as well. So yeah, George got those out. Do even have to say it? Yeah. Bulgari Porum. I already know. All right. So, uh, 60 people, not too shabby. That'll build over time. We'll go ahead and start with the first one. I want to wait for Hez to get here. Cause he'll get here at some point. Cause I tagged him in the IG post. So this is a brand new house. I don't know the notes. I don't know the notes for any of these except for one of them. Cause I mean, the, the name is geranium vetiver. Obviously geranium and vetiver is going to be in there. So that one's going to be iffy. We're saving that for last, but this gentleman reached out to me when he was in the early stages of creating his brand. I told him, you know, reach back out to me. Once you got everything established, you, you got your, your packaging set up, your fragrances created, you have your website become a brand and, and then reach back out to me. But he reached out to me when he was in the process of starting this. So very honored that, you know, copper steel fragrances, this copper steel 51. I am going to assume it's an extremely boozy fragrance cask strength. So I don't know the notes, but like I said, I'm willing to bet this is a boozy fragrance. So let's get this out. Oh, wow. It's snug in there. So let's check this out. This looks like a 50 ml. Copper Steel 51 fragrance. Little faux wood cap, or is it real wood? Ooh, it holds snug. I could. It looks kind of faux wood. Plastic inside. That's okay. All right. So here we go. I'm, I'm expecting this to be very boozy. Big wide mist. Oh, wow. Whoo. Strong boozy. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at some notes on the website after. Because like I said, I don't know the notes to any of these. I know bourbon's supposed to be boozy. The notes are on the bottle, actually. So yeah, there's bourbon in that one, obviously. There's a freshness to this that I wasn't expecting. I was expecting rich and ambery and boozy. And I'm not saying it's not, but it's it's definitely got this tonka bean smell. Like I'm reminded of a little bit of that vanilla ice cream tonka bean that bourbon vanilla Flower City fragrance has, but not as strong and prominent. In the backdrop, though, for sure. There's definitely a strong wood presence here and some spice. It doesn't distinctively smell like cinnamon, so I, I'm not going to rule out that it could be some cinnamon, but there's a spice here. It doesn't come across super peppery. There's something spicy about this. This is not as in your face as like uh, New Orleans jazz and booze from City Rhythm Fragrance. That's mega boozy, heavy bourbon. This is a little bit more balanced than I anticipated it being. I figured it would be in the realm of super crazy boozy like New Orleans jazz and booze. In some ways, I could see where you're coming from. This is definitely not as boozy as Sweet Tobacco Spirits. That's a strong red wine accord. And not as sweet either. But I could see where you're coming from with that. Okay, here we go. He pulled up the notes for us, so I don't even have to look it up. Kentucky bourbon, honey, plum, distiller, spices. So there's the spices. Corn mash, tobacco, vanilla, oak. That's that strange woodiness. Maple and toffee. So there's a variety of sweetness here because this is sweeter than I thought it would be, but it's not sickeningly sweet. That spice is settling in more. The spice in the woods kind of really take this fragrance's scent profile in a chokehold. Spicy and woody with an underlying sweetness. The vanilla is what stands out. And the bourbon's ever so present, but it doesn't overrun the fragrance. Certain, some fragrances can just be too much booze, you know, um, or just extremely. And sometimes I'm in the mood for stuff like that. But quality is top notch. This is really freaking good. This is going to be hard to top. I mean, I'm not saying these others can't, but we started with a good one here, guys. We definitely started with a good one here. This is really, really good. Shit. I wasn't expecting it to be. I figured it'd be pretty good, you know, but uniqueness goes a long way. When I don't have anything that smells like what I'm currently smelling, it, it excites me, you know, so much redundancy and perfumery. And I'm not saying there isn't things out there that may remind you guys of certain other sweet and boozy fragrances, but it's not that. I mean, you read these notes, honey, plum, vanilla, and maple and toffee you're gonna you're thinking super crazy like syrupy sweet it's not it's not that oak i'm like i'm, I'm looking at stream yard right here 
the oak and the distiller's spices. I couldn't tell you what corn mash smells like, but the oak and distiller spices, that stands out to me the most, followed by the bourbon and the vanilla. Tobacco, maybe as it settles down more, but at the top, not really. I don't smell tobacco at the top. 38 likes, 76 viewers. I'm with Joel. Like the video. What is it? So it is a brand new... Indie House and Fragrance, Copper Steel Fragrances. This is Copper Steel 51. And this was the notes pulled on screen. Josh Alsip went ahead and pulled that up for us so I didn't have to bother going to the website. I appreciate that. A lot of this makes sense. The only thing that really doesn't jump out at me heavily, I mean, I don't get a bunch of plum and stuff like that, like honey and vanilla and all that makes sense, but the oak, the distiller spices, the Kentucky bourbon, the vanilla for sure. And I would anticipate maybe as it dries to get some earthiness from some tobacco or something like that, but it doesn't really jump out at me, you know? Corn mash is an interesting note. Yeah, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that smells like. Never, I've never distinctively smelled that ever, I don't think. <clears throat> uh, Justin Gray, I'm missing the comment here. Okay, here we go. Keep my eye on the rack stores. If anything, grab it online. Not sure what fragrance y'all are talking about, but okay. Corn mash don't smell good, LOL. There you go. <laughs> well, whatever's going on here, it's working. This is really good. There's a dryness to this. I don't know if it's because of that corn mash being mixed in there, the type of tobacco, the oak, the spices being drier. I'm not sure. But that I think that's what's kind of smoothing off some of that sweetness to where it's just not too sweet. Because it's really countered heavily by this dry, spicy, woody tone. And the bourbon, like I said, the bourbon, it's very surprising because it doesn't overtake the fragrance. That's the biggest shock for me. This is a solid 8 out of 10. Easy, great fragrance, 8 out of 10. Through wearing, that could continue to rise. This has potential to move up into the outstanding territory in the eight, the, you know, 9 out of 10 range. But first impressions, definitely an 8 out of 10. This is really good. Yeah, man, that's good. Okay, we'll put that back in its box for now. Scent of the day, Polo Red Extreme. Uh, I haven't tried Austin yet. I have a decan of it over here. I just haven't opened it. I know I'm going to get a bottle at some point, and we'll, we'll go through the process with it. Um, yeah, I haven't tried it. Copper still sounds great. It smells great. Absolutely. So all of these were sent to me. All of these were sent to me. Um, like I told the story. Uh, you may have just joined, but before we went into this, when I told that, you know, the gentleman that started this company reached out to me before he had anything and said he was going to be making a fragrance, gave me the theme and what he was going for, what the brand was going to be about. And, and I told him, you know, once you got everything situated, you got your website, all that good stuff, reach back out to me. So he did. And here's the fragrance. And it's fantastic, too. Boy, that spices is really jumping out at me. I, I really like this one. Uh, teach their own. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, I can't judge it yet. So, all right, let's move into the next one. I was hoping Hez would have showed up. We're going to check out bourbon finally from Hez Parfums. Tops apple and spice. Mid is bourbon, tobacco, tonka bean. Base is sandalwood, cedar, vanilla. Not too far off from what copper still had going on in the same realm. So it's going to be sweet, spicy, boozy. I like the color. It's like a peach color. Sounds like a good fragrance for the season, for sure. So let's see what we're working with on this hand. See what Hez has going on here. Because, look, he was relentless about getting this to me for me to try. He was relentless. He's usually in my live streams. I'm surprised he's not here. Oh, this is much more boozy. So, so all of these websites are linked in the description. So if you just go to the description, it's, it's right at the top of the video description. I don't know if he's got samples. I would assume he's got samples. I know Hez does. This is much boozier and spicier. This is booze and spice immediately. Because it's kind of a crisp tone to it. That's probably the apple, but it doesn't smell like fruity apple smell. But there's this crisp brightness to this very spicy and boozy smell. And it's creamy. It's, it's crisp at first, and then as you... Dive a little deeper. There's a creaminess here, which could be vanilla, 
Could be sandalwood. Could be both. Probably vanilla because I smell vanilla. This is nice. This isn't as in your face as I thought it would be either. I assumed one of these two would be pretty loud for being boozy fragrances and like like really of just aggressive. Quite smooth, actually. And speak of the devil. We are current. We just started talking about it. I literally just sprayed it. So it's not as in your face as I assumed it would be. I, it's not aggressive. It's much smoother. I get crisp, I get creamy, I get spicy, I get a lot of bourbon. A lot more bourbon than the last fragrance. Equality's in the house. What's going on, Agoon? How are you, my man? 95 people in the house, 50 likes. Let's get those likes up, my guy. You know, mine, fellas. Help a brother out. So, not too shabby. A little different than I anticipated it to be. It's much, much smoother than I thought. Even smoother than Copper Steel 51 which has, we, we looked at this one first, we're two boozy fragrances right now. There's more spice in copper still than in bourbon. This is so creamy and sweet. it's getting much creamier. I don't really get tobacco in this one either. Maybe a little bit now that I'm deep diving a little more. But I definitely get creamy and sweet. Vanilla sandalwood probably is what's what's doing this. It's got a vanilla smell. So, but I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's somewhere along the lines of the sandalwood as well. My favorite indie house is in the house. Niles, what's going on? I appreciate the 999 super sticker. Thank you, sir. People have been asking me about Austin. This is very different from what I anticipated it to be. And I don't say that in a negative light. It's so much smoother and not as masculine as I anticipated. I can see a lot of women enjoying this one. This is perfectly unisex. There's no real masculine tone to the profile. Very creamy, lightly spiced. I think the vanilla and the sandalwood are really kind of taking over this fragrance, at least on my skin. It's quite nice. I don't like it as much as Copper Still 51. I gave this one an 8 out of 10. I still think this is very good. I'm going to go with Hez. I'm giving you a 7.5 out of 10 first impressions, which if any, if you know my rating system, 7 and 7.5 fall into the very good territory. It's a great rating. Uh, not knocking my socks off completely, which neither of these have knocked my socks off completely. I've both They're both very good to great. And this is just the first impressions. Maybe over time, that will go up. I have to spend more time with them. Obviously, this is just first impressions. But definitely very good fragrance. Very good first outing, sir. Next, we're going to look at the newest from Untamed Perfumes. We're stepping up the presentation a bit here. Salish C, I believe is how you say it. And it's even on the stickers that have it sealed. As you can see, I... Have not opened it. So My Greek Lover is fantastic. A white grape and quince fragrance. I have all the other offerings from the house, and that one blew me away. That is my favorite. My Greek Lover is absolutely fan freaking tastic. For anybody that's got any samples from Untamed Perfumes, man, those are good. Let me cut this, and we'll dive into it. I'll try to keep this on the shorter side if I can. Hez, thank you for sending it my way. I definitely like it. Like I said, very good fragrance, 7.5 out of 10 in first impressions. I will give it some more wearings. I got plenty of cold weather ahead of me still. I'm out in Colorado Springs, man. We get snow all the way into like late March, early April. So I got plenty of cold weather. And these first two are boozy and cold weather appropriate for sure. Thanks for checking it out, Ross. Oh, Josh, that's – oh, that's so that's you. Okay, that's why he put the notes on screen. <laughs> so Josh is – I couldn't remember your name, so it's Josh who who has Copper Steel 51. Okay, that makes sense now since you're thanking me for checking it out. I appreciate you, Josh. I, My apologies. I could not remember your name. So, all right, on to Untamed. Wow. Here we go. 30 ml extraits. Now, this is – even more niche than the others, to be honest with you, because I, like I said, I have experience with the other six from the house. She even puts the cotton just in case it leaks. I mean, it's finite details make a difference. Atomizer's lined up. Ooh, there's a silky tone to the label. The label's been upgraded just a little bit. Let me get it to focus. There's a silky tone to it. So we won't read the card yet for it. We're just going to spray 
let's go right here on top of the wrist. One good spray. Based on the word sea being in here, I expect a salty sea breeze aquatic marine type of fragrance. All good, bro. Thanks. Yeah, no doubt. It's a great fragrance. It's my favorite so far. It got the 8 out of 10. So we'll see if anything can top it. It's the one to beat right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Now we're getting niche, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting we're getting uh, niche. When I say niche, I don't mean quality. When I say niche, I mean not mass appealing, targeted audience, you know, the more artistic fragrances. This is much more artistic. That's what I mean when I say the word niche, for those of you that didn't know. This reminds me of a pile of seaweed on side the beach. Very bitter salt water smell. Very bitter. Believable. Still has a breeziness to it. I bet this is going to dry down nice. It's very bitter at the top. So if bitter fragrances are off-putting to you, this opening is going to be a little strange, which it is a little strange even for me, but I, I like that salty aquatic vibe. And the more niche, the better, especially when I can get that seat. I, I would be surprised if there's something that there's got to be something along the lines of a seaweed salty accord because it's very bitter and salty but still very fresh and breezy. Ooh, this might be the best of the bunch so far. It's just so niche. You know what I mean? This could be a polarizing one, but it's getting better by the moment. It's this green herbaceous feel starting to settle into the fragrance. Curious. Let's read this card. So we'll read the story first. Today the sea is my muse. A contemplative wood draws me seaside on a stormy afternoon where I'm captivated by how the water dances wildly and energetically. Humbled by its power and vastness, the sea frightens, fascinates, moves, and inspires me. Solace Sea will transport you to the edge of the sea after the passing storm amongst rustling beach grass, there's the green, smooth driftwood, there's the salt, and wild honeysuckle. That's interesting. Kissed by sea spray, breeziness. You'll be invigorated by the cool ozonic breeze, fresh rosemary, sea salt. There's the saltiness, herbal notes, and a touch of black pepper introduce you to Salish Sea. In the heart, wild florals and honeysuckle and a soft lily of the valley meet with smooth driftwood and a gentle dose of salty seaweed. New ask. Seaweed's so distinctive, especially in a niche fragrance. A base of sweet beach grass, balsamic fir absolute, an exquisite green note of oak moss, and the essential marine note of ambergris bring you to the end of your scent journey. Top of sea salt, rosemary, black pepper, herbal notes, hearts, honeysuckle, lily of the valley, sea spray, seaweed and driftwood. Bases, beach grass, fir balsam, oak moss, and ambergris. Yeah, very marine and green for sure. Distinctive, really good. And holy shit. Okay, so if I didn't have this on right now around my neck, I would be spraying this. Good God, I like this a lot. Okay, so this is, uh, we'll get to the rating in a minute. I'm going to enjoy this a little bit more, but Boozy Fragrance Fellas, very good outings, but this one's doing it for me even more. It's so green, salty, and breezy. It's not the most nuanced of things. It's, in its current stage, very straightforward. That could change. It's an X straight. I'm sure it's going to nuance more throughout the hours. I'm not going to wash any of these off because I want to see how they're going to transition over time. Jared with $5 super chat, my Greek lover. Yes, never heard of it, but honestly sounds great. Very interesting notes. Looking that up ASAP. Y'all slap the like button. Check out my Untamed Perfumes video. I did. A, I covered all six fragrances um, a while back, last year sometime, like maybe early last year. And it is, that was my favorite. It's got this white grapes note and a quince note. It's very citrusy, thirst quenching, fresh, zesty, unisex too. It's so good. There's, there's a lot of storytelling with Untamed Perfumes. And the quality's top tier. Wave Musk, no. Uh, Wave Musk is much more mass appealing than this, whereas I find this to be a lot more niche. Because that sea salt hangs, it's not going anywhere. It is very present and prominent right now. So if you don't like seaweed and sea salt, you're not going to like this because they it's 
that's what the fragrance is right now. Very green and herbal, but very salty, bitter, and aquatic. Bitter is the key word here. So if you don't like stuff like that, which I love stuff like that, even on a designer level. Um, but if you like, think now, obviously this is not on the same level. But just to give you a bit of an idea, think the saltwater marine aquatics of like Bulgari's Aqua. That line, Aqua and Aquamarine, with Aquamarine being much fresher, but Aqua being more along the lines of that synthetic seaweed smell. This is more realistic, therefore much more bitter and salty, but fan freaking tastic. Fan freaking tastic. 69 likes, 103 viewers. We can do better than that, guys. We can do better. Gotcha. Check out the replay and see if he did bourbon yet. Love support. Yeah, I did. I did a little while ago. That was the second one that I did right before this. All genres. Bops, how are you? About ready to head to the beach after smelling my Greek lover. Uh, so this isn't my Greek lover. This is Solish C. My Greek lover was my favorite from the house prior to this. And it still potentially could be, but I don't know. This one's very impressive right now. It stings the nostrils just a little bit because, I don't know, it's just, it's so bright and ozonic at the same time. Like the card, the detail in the story for the card is spot on to walking you through the scent journey of what she was trying to create here. All right, let's see. Let me scroll down a little bit. What's going on, Randy? How are you? Kevin, nice to see you. Great review of Blue de Chanel Parfum. Ross was deciding which between the three, and I'm going to go with the Parfum. Yeah, it's 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 the best blue fragrance out there. Not everybody's going to agree with me. I would sample all three. You may like the EDP more. You know what I mean? But for me, the Parfum's a masterpiece when it comes to blues. Sin of the day, why EDP intense? Randy, send me a decant. <laughs> I can try it. I'm very curious about that one. Ogun says, hit the like, support your favorite reviewers. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, my man. So I know we're splitting a little bit of the audience right now. I know Dan was live for about 30 minutes before. I was watching his for a little bit before I had decided to go live because I had wanted to. I had this in mind earlier today. It just took, I didn't set it up till about 30 minutes before. But um, man, I appreciate you guys being here. We got one more fragrance to go through, but it's hanging on to this stage. It's not really changing, but I got to say, almost took my breath away. It's, it's very, very much my style. If you live in a warmer climate and you like luxury niche artistic fragrances that are going to tell you a story. And I mean, if you read this card and you smell this fragrance, dead accurate, this is a nine out of 10. This is outstanding. Solace C is outstanding from untamed perfumes. She outdid herself this time. I'm going to have to message her and just tell her, please come watch this. And I'll give her a timestamp. Please come watch this. Fantastic, guys. Fantastic. Worth sampling. She definitely does samples on her website. And there's, I believe, travel atomizer options as well. I'm not sure if you can do a discovery set, but that's the one to beat. Now, on to the one I'm most nervous about. Mer Marimetta Fragrances, Geranium Vetiver. I hate Vetiver Geranium from Cree. It smells like roach spray on my skin. I hate it. And I told him that. He's like, well, I'm going to send it to you anyway. I still want your opinion. Because I told him, I said, now just know there's a chance that I'm going to hate this. If it's anything like Creed's Vetiver Geranium, I'm going to hate it. So, I, I mean, I, I've been covering his fragrances since the beginning. He's he's a good sport. Again, I'm I'm going into this with my, my nerves being bad about not liking it because I don't, I've had bad experiences with this combination where that was the name of the fragrance, and it was a Creed fragrance even. So we're going into it. Magnetic Caps, Marimetta Fragrances. They do make some good stuff. Le Lava, for those of you that haven't tried it, it's leather and lemon bars, basically. It's incredibly unique and fantastic. It's my favorite from the house. But let's go. One more. All right. I'm going to give it a second before I breathe through my nose. Let's catch up on some of these comments. Not into Dan's... It's like a sweet geranium. Smell it in the air. Okay, this is strong. This might be the strongest fragrance as far as projection of the four. Because I smell it like it's right under my nose. Fahrenheit Le Parfum. That's some good stuff, man. Vivian Oud. Le Lava is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Lemon bars and leather. It is so good. It's so, so good. 
And this is overtaking the other three fragrances. Okay, nerves are gone. This does not smell like roach spray, guys. Yay. It's a woody, lightly earthy vetiver. It's not super dirty and smoky. With a sweet geranium. This is more of a sweet geranium than a minty fresh. Not saying there isn't some mintiness to it, but it's more of a sweet tone. It's a little spicy. Okay, okay. I'm liking it. Okay. Better than I anticipated, clearly. That's a great cheapie for sure. New York Knights layered with accident. Uh, also have scent magnetic and Victor. Oh, shit. I'd appreciate that, Randy. I really, if you don't mind, yeah, send me those three. And uh, and I'll do, I'll do a little live first impressions on those too, man. I appreciate that. Scent of the day, sticky fingers. You can't say the way to go when somebody has a big collection. It's an expensive hobby for sure. Better than I thought, but still not the best fragrance here today. I got to say, if you like vetiver and geranium, you'll probably really like this one. Very dominant by it. The name is very fitting. I don't remember the oil concentration. All of these are extraits. Each one's a different concentration, I'm sure. I'm curious. Let's, let's pull up the website. Go to Marimetta Fragrances, Geranium Vetiver. So prices are from $4.99 to $64.99. So you can get a 2 ml for 5 bucks, or the 50 ml like this will run you 65 But top notes of marigold and citruses, mid notes, geranium, caraway, honey, lily, and orange blossom. Base notes of vetiver, marine notes, woods, and musks. A bright and fresh citrusy formula containing geranium and vetiver. This classy smelling fragrance opens with a fresh, bright citrus, and it's followed by a geranium with a touch of vetiver. Yeah, undoubtedly. The citrus, geranium, and vetiver is perfectly blended to create a long-lasting impression. That is notes per the brand. There's a brightness to this, but this geranium is what's coming across as sweet. I don't get, it might be the honey or whatever that sweet note was that's in there. It's not overly floral. So, like, I know some people are turned off by orange blossom. A little bit. I don't get a ton of it. I could see that being in here, though. But it doesn't just jump out at me as this big, giant orange blossom note. There's a floral tone here. There's a little bit of a dirtiness. Like I said, it's more of a lightly earthy, woody tone to the way this vetiver is coming across. And it's more of a sweet, less minty type of geranium. But it really jumps out. The citruses, the marine notes, all that stuff, the musks, that could be providing some of this musky tone. There's a lot going on here, obviously. But there's specific things that are jumping out. But I'm not sure what direction this thing is going to turn. While we're letting that dry for a minute. Oof. Bourbon from Hez is getting creamier and smoother. This is more of a vanilla sandalwood fragrance than I ever thought it would be. It's a blonde, creamy, sweet wood fragrance. Whereas you would think it would be spice gourmand booze, you know? feeling it i like it Whew. copper still though still very spicy and dry and that vanilla is creeping in more like i said the vanilla it's got that vanilla ice cream vanilla bean type of tone that the tonka bean and bourbon vanilla from flower city fragrance has might even be the same tonka bean oil or vanilla oil whatever the hell it is And then I got my saltwater aquatic going on. Man, this is quite the diverse collection. And you would have thought these two would have been a little bit more similar to one another. Totally different fragrances. Both bourbon fragrances. Totally different. Zero redundancy here. And I mean zero. Zero redundancy between the two bourbon fragrances. Who would have thought? Yeah, vetiver geranium. I mean, geranium vetiver is definitely my least favorite. But it's better than I anticipated it to be. I'm going to say it's better than good. It's my least favorite from the from Marimetta. It's better than good. It's a 6.5 out of 10. You know, not a terrible rating. 
better than good, better than average. It's not just good. It's better than good. Not quite very good. Very good is the 7 and 7.5 range. Um, if the geranium and the vetiver didn't come across as dirty and sweet, if it was a little bit fresher, it probably could have made it to that 7 range to very good. But not bad at all. Hez is really good. I'm sticking with 7.5. Sticking with 8 for copper still. And I'm definitely sticking with nine for Untamed. So four really good fragrances, four very different ratings. Um, just for a recap, Marameta Fragrances, Geranium Vetiver, 6.5 out of 10. Hez Parfums Bourbon, 7.5 out of 10. Copper Still Fragrances, Copper Still 51, 8 out of 10. And the winner of today's stream, Untamed Perfumes. Solace C, 9 out of 10. Saltwater, seaweed, breezy aquatic. Hard to beat, especially when it's very niche like that. I never really dove into zoologists much. Let's see. We'll take a few more. We're only 36 minutes in. I'll hang out with you guys for a little bit longer. We got everything on the agenda taken care of at a pretty rapid pace. Sounds like aftershave. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but. Bourbon Street Dry Down is where the magic happens. It is very smooth. It's the smoothest of the four, for sure. Paco Rabanne, one million lucky. Not sure what Pyramid Beauty is talking about. I'm still on the hunt for Virtus Vanilla. Ooh, good luck. We'll own it. <laughs> I'm invested in my search now. Okay. Mm. Probably going to be a grower. Definitely unique in its own right. Not sure what fragrance y'all are talking about here. See, I get more spice and spice booze vanilla apple than the woods and heads. See, I get a lot of sandalwood vanilla. The spice I got was at the top, the apple and the spice, but it it kind of got away from that pretty quickly. A lot of sandalwood vanilla, still a little bit of spice, but a lot of sandalwood and vanilla. It's really nice, really creamy, really nice. Austin from City Rhythm. Peach noted. Let's see. Breezy Aquatic sounds nice. It, it's, it was my favorite of the four. It got the nine out of ten, you know. Mystery Tobacco. Supply. I don't like leather fragrances. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Kyler, because I love leather fragrances. I wore, um, speaking of leather, I wore Ben Sherman's signature out the shower last night. The Vetiver with Geranium. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sounds like, I wouldn't call it an aftershave smell. No, it's much more niche than that. Um, it's more of an enthusiast type of fragrance. It's an original blend. It doesn't remind me of anything specifically. Um, but I wouldn't relate it to aftershave. Now, maybe if an artisan wet shaving company turned that into a shave set, I could see that happening. Like if he, if Marimetta was to work with one of those artisans for sure. Uh, I don't know. It could be, I haven't seen it on the rack stores in a while either. Oh, oops. I jumped out. Thought you were still in the opening. Yeah, you're right. Dry downs, vanilla, and sandalwood. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it's settled in pretty quickly. Um, because I've had it on my skin for 25 minutes. So I kind of got through the opening and I'm in the heart early dry down, and it's pretty much sandalwood, vanilla with a little bit of spice, is what I get from it. I get more bourbon from copper 51, copper still 51, than than I do from Hez bourbon. This hasn't really changed. It's pretty linear. It's staying the same. If so, if you like how it smells in the in the top. Now, granted, it's been thirty five minutes roughly. I've had this one on my hand. It was the first one I sprayed, so it hasn't changed much. None of these have changed. I mean, that's not a lot of time. If these fragrances last eight ten hours, we're still in the very beginning stages. Obviously, I'm not going to get deep dry down while I'm on this live stream. Still going to be in like the heart of these fragrances, you know, because the openings, most fragrances, they transition from the top note into the heart pretty quickly within the 15 to 45 minute range, typically with most fragrances, not all fragrances, but with most fragrances, uh, at least the ones that have nuance. A lot of designer fragrances lack nuance, but when it comes to these more luxury oriented fragrances or these independent, you know, blends, especially with the quality when there's quality work being done because there's quality work being done with all four of these for sure. It's good brands, good brands. Like I said, I have experience with untamed and Marimetta, 
uh, Copper Steel, this is the first outing. So this was brand new to me. And then same thing with Hez. This is his first outing. So it was brand new to me. I can't wait to get that. I haven't smelled it, but I'm going to get that at some point. Little by little, little by little. Uh, my least favorite notes, the two that are most iffy for me are these two notes, geranium and vetiver. There's certain geraniums I love. There's certain vetivers I love. Usually this distinctive combo doesn't work for me, uh, but because there's usually a chance at the smell of raid on my skin. That's why I don't like the Terre d'Hermes fragrances. Ogivre is the first Terre d'Hermes flanker to not smell like Raid on my skin. The vetiver they use with my skin chemistry smells like roach spray. It's certain vetivers and certain geraniums and certain musks. If it's too animalic of a musk, it might not work for me. If it's a creamy animalic musk, I can work with that. Like Canadian Gentleman from Meleg Perfumes, I can work with that. That's a very animalic, almost deer musk, I think, if anything. But the dirty animalic musks, those can be a real challenge for me. I didn't, see, I, went, I went to Ross earlier. I didn't see anything cool, unfortunately. I mean, I saw some shoes, but fragrances, I didn't have anything. It's been bare. The new leather tobacco will probably be a grower for me. It's definitely unique, though. I get a smoky bonfire, but there's definitely depth. There's plenty of depth for sure. Shield Black Leather is a great cheapie for 15 bucks for TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I'll have to keep my eyes out on for that. J Mo, how are you? Figment Man, another Amwaze sighting. Well, I've never tried that one. I've heard bad things about that. <laughs> I've heard that basically smells like dirt. I've heard bad things. Uh, shout out to Hunter, Fragrance Hunter. He's the one that told me just bad things about that. I've read bad things on the internet, but I mean, I'm the type that I'll try anything any of these fragrances just to judge it for myself. I'd be open to try anything from my wash because I love that house to each their own. It's just on my skin. It does. It's awful, 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 awful. That's why you guys never see tear dam as ever on my channel. You never will. It smells awful on me. I have a carded sample of the parfum of the eau de toilette and eau très fresh. None of them work for me. None of them. I tried the eau givre with Justin and Andrea. Love it. Great. Fantastic. Whatever they changed up works for me like that one. I need to get a bottle of that one at some point. <laughs> uh, you'd have to ask somebody in the chat. I'm not sure. Not for the faint of heart. There you go. Luckily, I only bought a sample. Wasn't feeling it all. Yeah, it just doesn't work with my skin chemistry. Does not work, unfortunately. Um, so we're 43 minutes. We'll shut it down about 45 minutes if there's any pertinent or, or important questions you guys would like to get answered before we shut it down. I'll hang out for just another minute or so, and then we'll shut it down. We we knocked out everything I really wanted to get accomplished here. Let me turn these lights on. So again, if you're interested in checking out samples of any of these, I have their websites linked down below. None of them are affiliate links or kickbacks or anything like that. They did send all these out to me. Um, everything's always my honest opinion. As those of you that watch me on a regular basis, you know that shit. There's a... There, I don't get paid for an opinion that won't happen. Anybody that wants to pay me for an opinion, I don't work with. So just wanted to let you guys know, cause that's a misconception with what I do that, and you know, you can just pay to get stuff from me. No, <laughs> that's not the case. My integrity is not for sale and the trust you guys have in me, not up for debate and I'm not willing to risk, you know what I mean? So now free bottle, you want to send me a free bottle? Cool. As long as you're cool, whatever comes out of my mouth. Cause like, is he going to be happy this got a 6.5? No, but he's going to respect it because it's a good dude. You know, it's a good dude. So that's the kind of brands I like to work with. I love doing the Indie Fragrance Spotlight, hence the reason we're here right now. This is an interesting question. That's tough because there's a few that I really like. Like Grassland from Banana Republic is really, 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 really good. Um, I'm going to go with that, and it's cheap too. I, that's really good. Hez, I appreciate you sending it my way. Like I said, you were very adamant about me trying it, and I wanted to wait till you were here to talk about it. We started like maybe one minute before you got here, um, but very pleasant, very smooth quality outing, my friend. Quality outing. I'm going to spend more time with it. You'll see it in some Sin of the Day posts and stuff like that moving forward. I like it, though. I dig it. And I appreciate you being here, being so active in my live streams. I appreciate you. $2 Super Chat. Uh, I haven't tried it again. 
I haven't tried it again since I tried it that one time with Andrea while we were in Chicago. So that I would have to probably get two mLs of and spray on skin and spend a little time with. But it underwhelmed me on paper. I haven't smelled it on skin. Touch is a darker Terry MS. Might be better for you. You never know. And I appreciate you guys. Seriously, I really do. It really means, hey, I appreciate the work you're doing. And I appreciate because, like I said, that's the only time you'll ever see a gifted bottle on my channel is if the person sending it agreed to just being okay with me doing things my way and saying whatever the hell comes to mind. So that's why some things you'll never see on my channel. Cause there's like, I've told you guys in the past multiple times, I turn down more than I accept. You guys have no idea. Everybody wants to get some kind of free publicity and all the other stuff when they have a product for sale on the, on a, a fragrance channel. For example, if you have a fragrance for sale, you want exposure. It's much cheaper than trying to buy an ad and stuff like that or marketing. It's, it's affordable marketing and I get the dynamic of it and it's, when it's ethically done, I personally don't see anything wrong with it. That's as long as all three parties are benefiting the brand, the outlet, which would be me in this case, and the audience, which is you guys, as long as everybody can benefit from this and there's no ethical conundrum, I'm good with it, you know, because I always keep it real with you guys. Whether some people want to believe that shit or not, keep it real with you guys. 199, who is going to win the Super Bowl? Who? Probably the Chiefs. It's not the Super Bowl I thought it was going to be, but probably the Chiefs. I appreciate the Super Chat, Mikey. Uh, I don't know if I would say my favorite all time. Of the moment, it's my favorite, but I don't know if I would go all time. Um, Because wearability, the ombre leather DNA is much more wearable for me because it's not as in-your-face and aggressive but boy, if you want to make a freaking statement, leather tobacco is the leather fragrance for you. If you like leather fragrances and you want to make a statement, just really show out, that would be the way to go. It's that showstopper type of leather fragrance. Whereas I find the ombre leather scent profile is much more daily wear in the cooler weather. You can wear that one every day. Leather tobacco, you got a pretty serious lifestyle if you're going to show out on them like that every day because that's a special scent profile. Mickey D. Tuscan leather. Oh, pfft. I would take that over Tuscan leather every time because there's so many more affordable ways to smell like Tuscan leather, whereas there's no leather tobacco. There's no signature leather tobacco out there. I'm not knocking Tuscan leather. There's just so many ways. Like I like Baccio and Martel from Argos better. It's I like Godolphin better from Parfums de Marley. You know what I mean? And they're, they're niche and they're more affordable <laughs> than getting Tuscan leather, you know? Good stuff, man. That's actually what I'm wearing. I have all these other four fragrances on, but I got five sprays around my neck of black Anubis, 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 however you say it. Well, it all depends. I mean, that's all part of it. It's it's what our space is. YouTube is one big advertising block, whether people like that or not. Our niche, this little community, is growing into that. It was the inevitable. Every niche and hobby went on social media. There's going to be dollars involved in it at some point. And as long as your, your integrity is not for sale, I personally believe there's nothing wrong with it. As long as you keep it real with your audience, I don't, there's no issue. I monetize my time. There's nothing wrong with monetizing your time. But there is a problem with selling yourself. There's the difference. I'm not willing to do that. And I'm not saying any one in particular person does. This isn't the call anyone out that's not what i'm doing here I'm just speaking about myself unfortunately from canada i can't send fragrances you need a special permit oh really ogun says leather tobacco got worn five days in a row now ogun is a different case <laughs> okay that man has the personality to wear that every single day that is a very strong and assertive personality when it comes to ogun that's the he's got that demeanor to him that commanding demeanor you know what I mean? So uh, anybody that's watched Ogun or knows Ogun or spoken to Ogun, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. That man's not playing around. It's serious. Big teddy bear heart, but you don't fuck with that man. You know what I mean? He's a very assertive, powerful personality. So that's why that makes sense that he wore that five days in a row. Me, I, I spread it out. Let me wrong. I'm very confident and assertive in my own right, but I like to mix it up a little bit more. Um, but hey, 
countered my point, but he's also the right person to do that. You know what I mean? He's the, he's the, this is the right guy for that. I'm going to go right there. Shout outs to my man, Ogun. And quality fragrance. I'm poor because of them, but I smell amazingly good. 10 4. What do you think of Red by Perry Ellis? Uh, it, it's a decent gym fragrance. It's stronger than I would like, as long as you're easy on the sprays. I don't like, I don't like to stand out at the gym with a fragrance. That's like, I smell sweet fragrances and stuff all the time at the gym. And that's, that shouldn't really be a part of the gym, in my opinion. If you want something fresh and clean and just kind of to yourself, kind of like just an accessory to your deodorant, your personal hygiene, um, that's kind of the route I like with gym fragrances. Something like that. It's actually stronger than people give it credit for. So if it's just two or three sprays, sure, the scent profile does just fine with that. Okay, so I, I missed one. Not so famous says, you don't like prostitution. What's wrong with that? It's an honest job. My body, my choice. LOL, sell yourself, girls. It's okay. Because <laughs> I just had to approve it. Um, YouTube deemed it potentially inappropriate and held it for me to review. So went to Westheimer at Macy's, grab YSL, Y Live, EDP Intense, and I'm impressed. Well, I'm going to be trying it pretty soon. Deadly Phoenix, not a fan of red myself. Certain synthetic note that I don't like. Perilous Reserve is much better. 10 4. Soul not for sale, Russell Real. Yeah, I'm not my thing, man. I love what I do, but I'm unapologetically me. I'm not changing. You know, I, I appreciate all of you wanting to take part being here today, for example. Currently 90, 95 of you. I appreciate you guys. Not the biggest crowd we've ever had, but even if it was just five of you watching right now, I'd appreciate all five of you. I just love talking fragrances with you guys, and this is the I guess you could say the other side of me in these live streams because I'm not as foul mouthed in a recorded video. There's an agenda in the recorded videos, whereas we had an agenda here today. But now that we're past the agenda, we're just cutting up a little bit. Oh, I don't think so. Not necessarily in the evenings. If you're going to be in a climate controlled environment indoors or something, sure. But out in that humidity, ah, it's very, very sweet. Very sweet, very boozy, very thick and strong, heavy fragrance. Wear at your own risk in that in that situation. I would definitely get a sample. You can get a couple different size decants from Door Prestige. I would try that. And on that note, I think we are going to go ahead and shut it down, guys. 53 minutes in. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you to all four brands for sending these my way. Uh, great work across the board. Again, Geranium Vetiver. Better than I thought it would be. But still, the lowest score of the group, 6.5 out of 10. We have Mr. Hez's first outing with Hez Parfums Bourbon, 7.5 out of 10. Very good. Copper Steel 51 from Copper Steel Fragrances, Josh's Fragrance, 8 out of 10. Great. Great first outing. And then my favorite of the video, the 9 out of 10 Outstanding from Untamed Perfumes. This is Solish C. So... We'll go ahead and shut it down. Thank you all for being here. Weekly rotation tomorrow. Check out my Blue Dish Chanel Parfum review today if you haven't checked that out yet. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Y'all have a good one.